Uh, could you just give like a brief overview of how you made it in the industry? I put out a record. Uh, Tacoma Records recorded me. Hmm. A disc jockey in Chicago got me a job, a couple jobs, and the record got a review in Rolling Stone, which, uh, along with the jobs through the disc jockey, and, yeah. and the record itself got me into an agency, a booking agency, and then uh, just been flogging it ever since. It's uh, all a matter of uh, chance, I think. Do you think it's, it was harder to make it? Because you're not like commercial as far as AM or something like that. No, it was. It was uh, I anybody I know who makes a living playing mm -hmm. got into it uh, on the oblique. It didn't happen if they were looking for it the way they wanted it to, and mm -hmm. uh, usually it happened despite the fact that they weren't looking for it. I wasn't looking for it. I wanted mm -hmm. to make a couple records, and I went out to play the three jobs with John mm -hmm. to meet John. And, my guitar was stolen and went broke. My wife got pregnant and she got very, very sick. And, and uh, we had to get a record deal. We had to get some money. Was there a big risk involved, like putting up money and for the album? And then, uh, you know? It was, uh, the only risk you run is getting tied up for a long time with an asshole. It's real possible to get rotten management, rotten agency, and a rotten record company all at once. And Are you still in Capital now? Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm with a company called Chrysalis now. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh -huh. I went there mainly because Capital has an old style contract where they require uh, an album, first of all, every six months. My first six <laughs> records for that were done in and uh, they're willing to go one every nine months, but I knew I had a long wait coming up, so I went somewhere else. Yeah. They're a good company. Did they let you do what you wanted to musically? Oh, you know, yeah. They, I mean, they, they just let you go wild, you know, do whatever you wanted? Yeah, they... <laughs> just as long as you have the product, right? The product. perfect, the, you know, the perfect proof of that is Lou Reed's... Lou Reed's record of, of noise. <laughs> she can do anything that you want to. They'll put it out because they, they usually have to. But they give you lots of opinions and lots of shit. There's lot. There's some compromises, comprom compromise records and stuff come up. If you want to, you can do whatever you want. Do you ever bring your family with you when you tour? I used to try that, but they'd all get sick, so it was just <laughs> home. Probably runs into bucks too. Yeah. No, well that. That isn't, you know, you get used to that kind of overhead. It's just, uh, you can't, uh, it's two different ways of getting along and you can't have both of them. There are some people who try that. Jesse Colin Young has his whole family with him all the time. And they're on stage with him, his brother-in-law and his wife. But I couldn't do that. I'd, I'd just kill somebody after a while. It's too intense. Yeah. Do you play a lot of dates in a row, or do you bust it up like just... I bust it up, unless mm -hmm. I'm playing out of the country, and then I do them all in a row, so that my agency mm -hmm. will still take me back when I come home. Hey, you've played Europe and Australia and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's getting around. Yeah. I don't peek anywhere, I just seep out over the hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> it gets to be kind of tiring after a while. It's the first time you ever played in Nashville? Yeah, no. I've played here before. I played here a couple of years ago somewhere. And, uh, played here five years ago. Mm -hmm. so five. What's well, essentially the bad They changed thing. the building around when they made it into a little nice little theater. Yeah. yeah I've, and I think one other time maybe opening for somebody on a tour or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not real clear. I'm just interested. Do you, do you read music? I can if I mm -hmm. have to. I used to be fluent. I could sight read the bass clef when I was playing trombone, but I, <laughs> I don't really remember it. When you arranged Boré, like that, did you just... Song? I read that off a piece mm. of piano music, which is why there's a bar missing in the, in the second part. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't get it. And I've been... More, more to the point, I've been too lazy, you know, to mm. get it since. 
on that, that album, your feet are smiling. Is that you playing the trombone for like a second? To it? Yeah, a lot of that. See, that's that's the beginning of what's called a flutter tone, which is uh -huh. a real low uh, Bob Watt, Bill Watrous sort of sound. That, uh, and it's great for warming up, but they cut it off, or somebody, or I cut it off, something like that. So I was playing the trombone because that was some, supposed to be something for me to do while they were changing tapes. <laughs> and I thought, well, by the time I would have to play the trombone, they would have changed the tapes and I could put the trombone down. Mm -hmm. And the first night I had to play the trombone, and it took me longer to change the tapes than I thought it would. And to my you know, horror, the audience thought I was serious, that I was really going to play the thing. <laughs> but I really didn't know how. And when I, when I didn't, it was disastrous. Yeah. Made a good cut, though. Played a lot of stuff off Greenhouse tonight, I noticed. Uh, yeah, I probably did. I never know exactly what I'll be playing, but it, it generally follows a, a pretty much the same format. Yeah. You know, the same sort of tunes prop up. J try to split it pretty much even down the line with vocals and instrumentals? No, just, sort of just whatever, however things feel. Arthur Rubenstein calls it the secret current. <laughs> you just pay attention to that. It's just pacing. Otherwise, it's not spontaneity. Yeah. It's a stiff. <laughs> what do you think of 1978 music right now? I mean, like the industry today. And that was like, an appropriate comment. <laughs> 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 well, I think too much, too much disco, and not enough. You know, it used to be when the Beatles happened, radio turned into a foreground medium, and now it's turning back into a background medium. But the music, I really noticed in that today, the music in the hotel lobbies is louder than it used to be. So that I, I think everything is homogenizing, and it'll pop. It'll change again someday, but I bet it'd be part of it. You think it's m more money oriented instead of art oriented? Something like that? It's very rarely art oriented. It, uh, uh, Craft? Through the late 60s, it was. And uh, it worked. But now, now that I think the industry is believing its own hype and they want to sell as many records as Gillette does Blake. Yeah. They really, they really yeah. think they can. And it, the sad part is they probably can. Yeah, so it's they're, big. They've got lots of little ideas. They're trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. Great. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.